I have been so frustrated because I've been trying to find the cause of a deadlock problem. And it occurred to me that preventing deadlocks really shouldn't be that hard. All you have to do is save the data in the same order every time. And the easiest way to do that is to have a repository with one save method. Now, if you haven't bashed your head against this problem, then that statement probably makes no sense. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and I'm gonna tell you what a deadlock is. And if I'm able to help you avoid problems like these and do it before your spouse and kids complain about watching geeky videos on the big screen, well, then please like and subscribe my channel. It helps spread the word to others and it gives me a nice dopamine rush. So let's get down to it. Here's a real simple aggregate. It's a class that represents a person and it has a collection of addresses. Now maybe this aggregate started out with just the person information, no addresses. So somebody wrote a repository with a save person function. Then someone else came along and decided to add an address collection. But instead of adding the code to persist addresses in the save person function, a new function was added to the repository to save addresses. This is where the deadlock story begins. So here we have two different use cases from two different controller endpoints or different processes, it doesn't matter. Both of them are creating a SQL transaction. So SQL Server is going to adhere to the ACID principles that guarantee data validity. It means that when a row is updated, it's locked. So we don't end up with inconsistent data. If another transaction comes along to update it, it'll be blocked. So let's walk through what happens when these two use cases execute at the same time. So use case one starts off with a transaction and it attempts to save the row in the person table. And when that happens, SQL locks that row. Use case two in the meantime starts its transaction, but it begins by saving the address, the address row. So the address row is locked. Now use case one goes to save the address, but it can't because that address row is locked. SQL prevents it from being updated. So it's going to be blocked and it'll have to wait until use case two finishes its transaction. But use case two, it tries to save the person record. And so it finds, oh, use case one has it locked. So it's blocked by use case one. So now we have two use cases that are blocking each other. And that's what a deadlock is. And they won't complete until SQL Server decides that one of those two use cases is going to be the victim. Whoever's the victim, that transaction will be rolled back and the other one will be allowed to complete. The problem is that takes time. And so your application is going to wait for SQL Server to decide who the deadlock is. Ugh, so what's the solution for this? Well, really, it's as simple as having one safe method in your repository. All right, so here's an example of what that person repository might look like. And we have a save person function and a save addresses function that are exposed through the interface. So those could be called by a use case. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of refactoring here. We wanna get rid of the save addresses function because we want that operation to be handled by the save person function. So now what we can do here is we can change the save person function to call the save addresses function. And once we do that, we can go ahead and make this private. And that's basically it. Now we're only going to have one function that can persist the aggregate. So those operations will always be done in the same order as dictated by the save person function. That cleans up our deadlocking problem. Simple as that. There are some amazing tools available online that will help you identify deadlocking situations in your database, as well as some locking and blocking problems. So I'll include a link of those in the description. If you have any comments or some ideas, please drop a, a line in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Have a good day.